Oh my God. I'm in Wyoming, almost halfway in. I had no idea I'm going through Wyoming, but I'm not staying in Wyoming, am I? I don't know where I'm staying at. Maybe I am staying in Wyoming. Ah, new state for prudence. That's like the piddliest sign. It's funny. Okay, uh, it smells like firewood out here. No gas stations, and I'm not entirely sure if I'm in the right um, uh, rest area, but it's supposed to be an hour and a half from Grand Teton, so we'll see, which I think is in Wyoming. Maybe I'm supposed to go to Wyoming. <laughs> I don't know, I'm so confused. Occupational hazard, I don't know where the hell I am. Well, that was unexpected. I'm in another state. Um, actually, I showered today, believe it or not. I just didn't do my hair, so I'm all clean. And hopefully tomorrow, the shower is near Grand Teton when I leave. And I actually have all day tomorrow, so I'm not in a hurry to leave. I've got a nine mile hike in the morning. Um, but yeah, it'll be a new, new national park. Um, and uh, yeah, this is like farming country out here. It's pretty. It's, that was a really pretty drive from Chubbuck, Idaho to wherever the fuck I am in Wyoming. <laughs> I have no idea. Occupational hazard, as I said. Occupational hazard of traveling is you don't entirely know where you are or what time zone you're in. So I may still be in mountain time. I have no idea. I thought I was going to Idaho. I did switch it because I was supposed to go to Dubois. Mont oh, shit. A bird just hit my window. <laughs> I'm in farming country. <laughs> you know, like you're in the middle of nowhere when nature just attacks you. Blue sky? Thank you. Sunset. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the world's finest firearms as well. This store right here. You'll see it coming up. There it is. Yep. I'm in the, you know, my people shooting gun. <laughs> so even though I'm ex military, I don't know why I didn't unplug my phone. Even though I'm ex military, I don't own a weapon. I don't own a gun. I have no desire to own a gun. I am qualified on an M16. I've shot a saw and uh, other, uh, thrown grenades and done other like shooting stuff. I've shot a Uzi, I've shot like, you know, rocket launchers, whatever you want to say. Um, but I have zero desire whatsoever to, uh, to partake in any of that. I don't need a gun. My weapon of choice is uh, in my van. <laughs> Multiple weapons of choice, which are not firearms. So um, anyway, enough of that. Yeah, this is crazy. This is like, there's nothing out here. There's no gas stations, nothing. I think the town is back that way. I see a, a highway patrol, lights flashing. Yeah, it's a good start to my next national park, which I think is Grand Teton, or Grand Teton, I don't know. And then after that, it's Yellowstone, which I was gonna do a few days in Yellowstone, um, but I decided that I was gonna fast track a little bit. But now I've got my check engine light came back on, that came on in Santa Fe, or no, in, in uh, Angel Fire. And it turned out to be catalytic converter, so I think the O2 sensor is whack again. Um, it'll go away in a few days if it does. Uh, I'll get someone tomorrow to like like an auto zone or something to do like the um, to get the code to see what it is. And I think it's like P O two P O four three O and P O two something. It's like P O four something something, and that's catalytic converter. It's very very common. And usually it means either your uh, gasoline is dirty, which I've been pumping all kinds of gas, cheapo gas in my van. It's either the, the gasoline needs to be clean, you can put like this, pour this stuff into your gas tank, or you need to just like physically clean the catalytic converter, which cannot happen because I have a cat clamp. So there's 20 feet of rebar wrapped around my catalytic converter. So unless you have some sort of like high-tech sawing device, you won't be able to undo anything. Plus it costs a thousand dollars to put that shit on my, my catalytic converters. Um, and then, as I speed up here, seriously did. I am in like crazy driving country, literally two minutes in Wyoming, and it's just like nutsville. <laughs> so anyway, the other uh, third thing is that um, I can have the O2 sensor cleaned. So usually some critter is probably gnawed on it or some snake is in it or something. I don't know. No, my luck, some snake will be wrapped around my Kelly convert and go, oh, I don't mind me, I'm just coming, coming along for the ride. All right, so it's getting dark. I thought I was going into Montana. No, I'm still, I thought I'd still be in Idaho. No, I'm in Wyoming. And Wyoming has only 500,000 people. And I've met about seven right now in the last 10 minutes who are the worst drivers in the planet. So um, statistically, uh, the percentage wise of uh, shit drivers is, I'm gonna say Wyoming. <laughs> so anyway, all right, coming up upon a town, there's so many churches here. Like in Montana, there's just billboards saying that like, Jesus will save you. I didn't see a single church. Here, there's like a church right next to another church. There's one church here, 
the brown church. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. And then a white church. And then another church over there. Okay, here is the rest area. It says no overnight camping. There's no one here. So there's no overnight camping, but I think overnight parking is okay. So this is the rest area. So let me just double check. I saw another car go in. So that's really bizarre, being an hour from Grand Teton and no overnight parking. Nobody is here. I did see one van life van in town. So I don't know exactly where I would park if I'm not allowed to park here. So let's see. Star Valley, that's just history. Uh, let me go take a look. This is a nice rest area if I'm allowed to stay overnight. Um, surprising there's no one else here. <laughs> Maybe they're camping or staying closer to Grand Teton. This is, this is where they said I could stay. So there's bathrooms. And let's see. That's it. This is all this is. I should be able to stay. I don't think anyone's going to come by. All right. <laughs> I guess I'm the only one here then. That's crazy. All right. Well, no one can see me from the road. So that's a good thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, okay. I'll just park here. And if, if they say anything, I'll just say I'm not camping. I'm parking. Camping is like tents. So, all right, we'll take a chance. I don't normally, you know, I mean, I know I'm allowed to stay. It says it's a rest area. You're allowed to stay overnight. So... All right, I guess I'm just the only one here then on a Friday night. I have made it to Grand Teton National Park. Jackson, Wyoming is beautiful. Seriously, this is absolutely stunning. It's crazy, you can just cross a state line and it's just like, what? Just punched me in the face with beauty. There's Prudence, there's the sunrise. Absolutely gorgeous. Right, I'm at Grand Teton and these like dumbasses were line jumping and now they're in the short line and they're way back there like just stay in your lane dude anyway um dropping all my cards everywhere I've got my accessibility pass to get in for free I need to pee I've got about 13 miles to the trailhead very easy to get in it is uh seven o'clock in the morning and it's already getting busy it is an absolutely beautiful gorgeous day so it is about 45 degrees uh, Jackson is not too far, actually. I might meet up with a friend uh, later. I don't really have anything else to do except get toward Yellowstone. I may go toward Yellowstone anyway early and go do the adventure park today. We'll see. It's open till 7. Um, but I have to be up in West Yellowstone. I want to go up that area um, toward Bozeman. Bozeman? Bozeman. Yeah, I gotta pee. <laughs> really bad, actually. All right, let's get in. Come on, people. Keep it moving like Disneyland. Hello, good morning. Do you have an accessibility guide? All right, we're in. I've got an accessibility guide right here. It's not as fancy as the one in Sequoia, which uh, Sequoia and Yosemite had the best accessibility guides. There were actual brochures. This is just a flimsy piece of paper, but at least it tells you what is accessible. So thank you, Grand Teton. There may not be that much stuff that is accessible or even that much stuff in this park compared to like Yosemite and Sequoia. Um, and this park may not be as busy, so I can understand why they get a little piece of paper and not like a giant, you know, humonga thing. Okay, let's go to my trailhead and go hiking. Okay, don't go to the first parking lot, which is the Jenny Lake uh, Trail Overlook. And don't park at the lodge unless you're buying breakfast. Um, so go down uh, to the next parking lot and it's completely empty, pretty much. And I think I'm going to be in the sun if I park here. The sun's over there, so it's going to come this way. And yeah, so here is my own personal parking space. <laughs> um, plenty of parking and it's going to be a long hike today. I've got to hike all the way to the other side of the lake. There's no boat operations due to, um, uh, what is it, due to uh, maintenance. So unfortunately I have to hike. So yeah, I'm just going to spend the whole day hiking. It's only 7.30. I'm going to make sure I bring enough, get my bear spray, bear bell, all that stuff. And there's me. Okay, awesome. <laughs> that guy was all staring at me. What are you looking at, dude? Anyway, um, okay, so we're in bear country. Uh, I gotta figure out how to get to the other side of the lake now. Um, okay, so no dogs. 
which means I'll probably see nine people with dogs. No drones, Kara and Nate. How did you not know? <laughs> Just kidding. If you don't know the story behind them, they were like, did a whole video about they're gonna boycott all the national parks because they didn't know they, had, they couldn't fly a drone. Right there, no drones. No bikes, no horses, no camping and no fires. Um, okay, it's filling up. So yeah, okay. So the uh, ferry's um, not working. It's being maintained right now. So I have to walk to the other side of the lake. So park boat permits required. Paddleboard would be nice. <laughs> I need to start doing that more. Anyway, uh, this is the boat launch. I don't even know where I'm supposed to go. The people kayaking. That's what I should be doing today. It is quite cold though. So today's alternate national park that I am channeling is the Channel Islands National Park that I went to a few months ago in California, which is fantastic. And you do take a boat out to that too. Um, so, okay, so I've got to walk this way along the lake. Actually, the lake's not very big, so that's good. All right, well, this part of it's not very big. These guys have the right idea. I got the whole little setup going on there. Okay, let me figure out where I'm going. Here's the other parking lot that was full, the tiny parking lot. So it's literally like a minute to the other one. Look how clear that water is. That is insane. This is gorgeous. I don't mind hiking 12 miles today instead of nine miles. No complaints on my end. Okay, so I think this is the right way. I've just got to go around the lake and it should connect to the Cascade Trail. And I think the other hikers I just spoke to are going somewhere else. No one else has bear bells, except me. Bear bell on my butt. <laughs> so again, if I had no only fans, I'm just gonna have my dingling, dangly bit whacking my bum cheek. Jesus, Grand Teton. What the actual hell? My God, you're beautiful. This may be my favorite park now. I mean, Sequoia was nice, but this is grand. Holy crap. Apart from having to go an extra three miles on the hike, actually not bad. Probably better than taking the ferry. There are so many people running on this trail. Why is everybody running? He's running, he's running. Why is everyone running? Excuse me. <laughs> Are they running from bears? Because I need to know this stuff. I think these are probably locals. Like, sorry, let me get my bear bell off. These are probably locals that live in Jackson, which is fine. I did one trail run, half marathon in Seminole Canyon, and I got first place in the 40 to 49 age group. Who knew I could run so fast? And I got fifth out of the women and 18th out of all of the men and women total. Um, anyway, so yeah, they're probably locals. It's just funny. It's like, why are you running? like slow down <laughs> so, no this is great i don't judge actually it's, i'm british-ish right so we just like silently judge and then like politely smile <laughs> that's kind of the british way the texan way is bless your heart which just means like f you so i never say that though but i do silently judge and casually smile i am now at the boat dock and i think that's the boat over there Even though it's not running, I think they're just uh, checking it out. There's no one on it. Um, but this is where the boat would dock. So that was less than two miles. It only took me like 25 minutes to walk over here. I was going pretty fast. Not as fast as the runners. Um, so now I'm going to figure out there's kind of a fork here. That's the dock. So now I want to go to Cascade Canyon. So, okay. So there's Hidden Falls Inspiration Point. There's an animal. They're so cute. They're like multicolored, like calico. Okay, and then horse trail, which I just came up because it's a bunch of horse shit. So, okay, so this is Cascade Canyon. That's a dock. This is absolutely gorgeous. I am, I am digging this a lot. I'm actually glad that I didn't take the ferry because I would have gotten off the ferry with a thousand million people trying to do this hike. Okay, uh, Cascade Canyon straight ahead. That's the Hidden Falls Trail. It's very short. Uh, that's all where all this water is coming from. So I'm going to continue on. It's a little busy. There's a couple people here. I think most people are just doing the loop and going to the waterfall. 
Um, but I'll do that on the way back. I just want to get the main part of the hike done and then come back around. This is great. I am two and a half miles in and I've been hiking for 45 minutes. So yeah, this should be done pretty quickly, I think. It's only uh, four and a half miles to the end of this trail and four and a half miles back, plus the extra four miles, so 12 miles total. So, okay, let's uh, hike on up. I'm at Inspiration Point. The trail that loops around is closed. So there's only one option, which is fine. And there it is. I feel uninspired. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Again, the Griswolds shrug. Yeah, I've seen the Grand Canyon. Off we go. I'll get a picture on the way back. So again, I just want to keep going. So I am now 2.78 miles in. So that's 1.78 miles on the Cascade Trail. And I think I've done the hardest part, uh, the steepest part, it's these stairs. So it's pretty easy. Um, it's funny, my bell's ringing and everyone's like, the bear bell. And I'm like, I could also have leprosy or it could be a court jester. And they don't get it because that's like a British joke from like the 1400s where the leopards had to wear bells. And I think America's only like 38 years old. Okay, on we go. That water is so clear. That is beautiful. It's great here. A couple asshole hikers. All right, I made it to the end of the trail. That was a long, very straight hike. Very beautiful. I thought it'd be more of like, like a rim trail view since I heard Cascade, kind of like the uh, North Cascades, which I didn't do because <laughs> it's out of the park. All right, that's awesome. Okay, yeah, definitely the gene pool is definitely uh, thinned out up here. Um, okay, so uh, I'm now, you can continue, you can like keep going. I'm gonna turn around and go back. Okay, so four and a half miles to the Jenny Lake boat dock and then two extra miles back to uh, where I parked. So that's good, that took exactly two hours and that was 6.5 miles. So not that long of a hike. A um, couple snarky hikers on the way, like again, be mindful if somebody looks different, moves differently, has different equipment, you know, or maybe doesn't even say hi to you. Like they may have PTSD, they could be disabled, you know, they're in their hiking mode. Okay, don't make some snarky remark about it. Like disabled people get a free access pass, lifetime access pass, and military get a free access pass per year. And then the lifetime access pass for disabled Americans. So millions visit these parks every year and they all hike in whatever capacity and accommodation that they require. So the majority of the hikers were very courteous. So, you know, the other thing is you don't want to like when the, when the trail, sorry, let me remember, when the trail is narrow, there's a lot of poison ivy, poison oak, a lot of poisonous things. So also make sure that you make enough room for somebody to go by. Right? So when you have all your freaking hiking poles diagonally, like blocking the trail and somebody has to walk into a gigantic bush of uh, poison ivy, like just beware, like know your plants, dude. <laughs> Again, so yeah, you know, it's just my PSA, um, just to make everything just a little bit more fun and, and easier for everybody to enjoy. You know, if you just, if you make snarky remarks, you don't let disabled people have the right of way, you trigger people's PTSD, you're not contributing to making the world more accessible, you're actually making it more ableist. And that's not cool. So don't be those people, okay? All right, uh, okay, so yeah, I wanna hike back. Probably not gonna film. I'm gonna try to go to the falls maybe, uh, up at Inspiration Point. And then, uh, yeah, it should be a pretty quick hike back. It's very flat once you get past Inspiration Point and you go up another little bit to the waterfall. Um, so yeah, so super easy. If you have mobility uh, issues, it is a pretty easy hike if you're able to get up those stairs. Um, it's a lot easier to go uphill than downhill. <laughs> downhill just kind of kills your back and your knees. Um, but either way, all right, so yeah, Grand Teton, Teton, uh, you are beautiful. <laughs> All right, I am gonna continue on. I have no cell reception, but I'm gonna continue on. And after this, go to the visitor center and then maybe check out Jackson, uh, Wyoming down the street. I don't know, got the whole day ahead of me. It's only 10 o'clock, so I'll be done by noon. And maybe I'll just go check it out. I don't need to be in Yellowstone until late tonight. So 
So one thing that's funny is everyone's wearing t-shirts from other national parks. So I've been asking questions like, oh, did you go to Badlands? Uh, is it hot there right now? Because I'm going to be there in a week and a half. So it's really funny that I'm like, I can just kind of ask people. I just saw two kids with Angels Landing t-shirts. I'm like, okay, I was dry heaving going up that thing, but they could climb it, no problem. Actually, I was fine, but okay. So moving on, almost there, easier to go back than up. All right, I'm at the inspiration point on my own private rock. <laughs> Have you ever seen, um, what was it? Here, there, no, not here, there, everywhere. What is it? Everything, all the time. The movie that won the Oscar that had uh, the kid from The Goonies. Um, anyway, so there's a scene about the rock. It's funny. Anyway, so there's an inspiration point down there. I'm going to sit up here on my rock and eat my snack and then head back. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to go all the way back over there. And uh, three hours and 15 minutes in, 10 and a half miles. Really good. Really good long hike. So yeah, the ferry's not working. Um, so I'll just do the two miles back. So after this, um, let's see, 10 miles. Yeah, so I've got about half a mile down to the bottom, a mile down maybe to the dock and then um, I just walk right over two miles back to the van. Awesome, the boat's running and there's a 45 minute wait for the boat. I can be back at my van in 45 minutes if I just walk the two miles. So I'm not going to take the boat. Uh, that's interesting. That's why it is so stupid busy over here for some reason. Oh my God, all these pushy people. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a Saturday and my itinerary put me in a very, very busy park, popular park on a Saturday. So, um, but it was good. Actually, the hike was fine going up because it was early enough. But that's why it suddenly got super busy because the boat started running while I was hiking. So, okay, well, I'm going to walk back. Uh, 45 minutes to wait for the boat. Um, although the boat trip might be nice, I think the walk would be nicer. Yeah, so that explains it. So the last, like... 30 minutes of my hike it was just like asshole hikers <laughs> like shoving pushing like just like blocking the trail like social hour and I realized they all came in on the boat <laughs> so okay now I'm back on my own private trail walking two miles back to the van which is much better this is much nicer it only take me 25 minutes or I could wait 45 minutes for a bus with rowdy crowded people <laughs> This water is stupid clear. That is crazy. I always say crazy. It's beautiful. Look at all the pebbles. I just want to jump in now. I'm so hot. Actually, I'm not hot. I'm fine. These people are just taking pictures of the same thing. That's funny. Oh, no, that's what they're taking pictures of. Ah, civilization. And my van, which is not in this parking lot. I've got to walk a little bit further. Oh my God. That was four hours and 12 minutes, 12 miles, 13 miles total. I gotta pee in this toilet. Oh God. Uh, now I could go in my van, but I have to take all my shoes off and stuff. So not that you need to know that. So I just talked to the ranger. They're just getting started. So she's on this side, uh, just to kind of monitor. And she said that her friends, not, she's like, not the other rangers, my friends, are gonna go over where the boat dock is. And she said yesterday, uh, the boat wasn't running yesterday, um, but it got so busy that the service dog, the blind service dog, ended up getting trampled. And I don't know if it's the same lady that was out with the dog this time that I saw. Hang on. Blue sky. Come on, blue sky. There we go. <laughs> um, I don't know if it was the same service dog, if they're hiking again. Um, but that is like, no. If you're a blind hiker and you have a service dog, you know, be mindful of that. And there's more people running. Same people. <laughs> I guess you got to be a runner so you can run away from the bears. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, these people got the right idea. There we go. That would never be me. I don't have the patience to set that stuff up. Okay, I'm now heading toward the visitor center and then back into Jackson. Is it Jackson Hole or Jackson? I don't know. Anyway, I'm heading back into the town uh, to go... Um, visitor center oh shit <laughs> so many people here um i need to go to like a napa auto parts or like an auto zone and have them just do a code reader and find out what that check engine light is it's not flashing it's just it's just there um but i think the visitor center might be super busy and super packed there are 
cars parked all the way on the side of the road, all the way this far up. So I am not going to walk. I just walked for 13 miles. I'm not going to walk any further. Um, anyway, and even then, here's the thing. Even like, okay, let me tell you something. All right. Oh, this is Jenny Lake. Okay. Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is the boat dock either. The Jenny Lake. I think, oh, okay, this is the boat dock possibly. Because yeah, because I didn't see a boat come over on, on my end. So, all right, let's not go here. There's literally a thousand million cars. I would film, but my window is filled with bugs. Yeah, this has to be the boat dock. Oh my God, there's so many people. That is nuts. My God, and all those people are pushing everyone around up there on the hiking trail. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna get out of here. Uh, yeah, don't come here on a Saturday in the summer. Uh, no, actually, it was fine. If you come here, I, I would honestly have done the hike had I known. I would have stayed in Alpine instead of Star Harmony, and I would have, which would take off another 30 minute drive, and I would have gone to uh, the hike, done the hike at 6 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. So that's what I would recommend. And thankfully, the boat wasn't running. So yeah, that that would be a much better idea. Okay, so now I have to go to um, Napa Auto Parts or like an auto zone and get them to do a code reader um, and figure out what the check engine light is. And then I'm gonna check out the little town and um, get some provisions at the supermarket, get some gas. And then I think I'm gonna head up to Yellowstone. If I can get to Yellowstone um, early afternoon, I might do the adventure park. I'm actually not tired, um, so that's fine. But it's, it's one of those like, uh, zipline adventure parks and I want to do it um, because I need to keep working on overcoming my fear of harnessed heights <laughs> because that's how I got injured in the army I fell and I wasn't harnessed I fell off a training course and shattered everything and, and uh, the person spotting me wasn't spotting me so yeah so I'm still working on it 18 years later um, but I do enjoy them and they're good for upper body strength which I still need to work on because you know it is helping with my spine disability and rehab my hand after surgery so all these other reasons and it's fun <laughs> that's another reason um, and then I think I'm gonna head toward yeah so I want to head toward Yellowstone West Yellowstone they also have a grizzly museum so when I get up there if I'm uh, too tired for the adventure course I'll at least go to the museum uh, there's a few museums like the West uh, the Yellowstone Museum and then the grizzly and wolf bear museum um, and then I can do the adventure course tomorrow. I'm just going to do the Old Faithful hike tomorrow at Yellowstone, which will be on a different video. Uh, I assume it's going to be just as busy, um, but if I can be up in the Yellowstone area and get into the park at 6 a.m., I'm getting up at 4 tomorrow. I am going to get up at 4, get ready to go by 5, and get into the park by 6. At least get my parking spot. And then, um, then I have, I think, an 8-hour drive after that. Uh, got to start driving toward uh, Devil's Tower and Wind Cave. So at Wind Cave, I, we're back to having a campground and then I have two cave tours, so we're back on track. Um, but yeah, super excited. It's nice up here. It's, it's not like that crowded. It's just the one thing you do, like the boat tour, like the boat ferry, is uh, it's just stupid crowded. And it like spits you out, right? At this like really steep incline hike, um, you know, so it's just really congested. And that's what I was looking for. It's not busy, it's congested. And when you're like, have mobility issues, um, congestion is not cool. Busy is fine, congestion is not cool. So, anyway, so I need to blow my nose too. Anyway, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go into town, uh, get some Wi Fi, and check my messages. And I have some friends in Bozeman, so um, I may end up, you know, hanging out there tonight. I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? These days are kind of wingy. The, the weekend, the same on the last trip, the last three week trip that I did, the weekends were just kind of like, oh no, I'm going to be in a busy place. I just happen to be in, you know, like the busy places on the weekend. So I had to just really kind of, just kind of deal with it and just get in and out as quick as possible. Um, but I'll definitely come back here. I would love to do winter here, like actually do snowboarding and stuff. Um, I think that would be great. So um, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, Jackson's pretty cool. Nice little cool little town. So let's go check it out. I found the visitor center. It's actually outside the park, outside the entrance. Um, so I'm gonna pop in here quickly and then I think I'm just gonna head toward Yellowstone.